to order. Uh, recording secretary, will you please take roll? All righty, a vice chair keeper. Present. Committee member Azadarian. Present. Uh, committee member Puentes. Present. Committee member Nathanson. Present. All right, so let the record reflect that uh, we have four committee members here and then Chair Bumgardner, uh, Committee Member Faulkner and Committee Member Stewart are not present. Great, thank you. All right, uh, this, this time we have modifications to the agenda. Item four, do we have any modifications to the agenda from staff? All right, thank you. Item five, approval of minutes from the August 5th, 2024 meeting. One set of minutes, September 9, 2024 was attached to the agenda for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? I have two notes. Um, I noticed, and this is actually a question, so it's not really a, um, a change in the minutes, as I know it happened this way, but um, Vice Chair Kiefer made a motion that was seconded by me to nominate herself and um, Lisa Puentes to the selection panel for project. And the question is, is that actually allowable in the rules that somebody can elect themselves to a selection panel? To my understanding, it is. Thanks we, to you. Okay. I'm almost positive, but we will yeah. confirm that. I can double we'll stack that. Yeah, yes. I mean, if, if, okay. if it's against the rules, that may not be a valid motion. Thank you. So I just want to make sure. I'm almost positive you can, Yeah. but we will check on that. Okay, great. And then um, on the final page under uh, committee reports, the word more is misspelled. <laughs> so I think there's less clarity in that sentence okay. than it's supposed to be more, if not more. That was in, you said committee reports? Uh, it's under no, item number seven, committee reports. It's a misspelling of the word okay. more, and otherwise everything is good. Thank you. Uh, no vote is needed yes. for this. Uh, the minutes are approved as amended. All right. Item six, this is the time, public comments. This is the time when any person may address any matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when each, when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Do any members of the public wish to make comments on art and public places items not on the agenda today? Comments will be heard on a specific agenda item at the time the item is called. Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you guys. I will now close public comment and we will now move on. All right, scheduled items, 7.1, police fence mural. Staff will present a project overview for the police fence mural. Our recommended action is to nominate two APP members for the selection panel. Meredith, I'll hand it over to you. Um, so today um, we will be presenting to you um, a mural project at the police station. And Pamela is here from the police station um, as well to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Um, and as you remember, this was moved from uh, last agenda item to Today. A little on the project background. Um, the police department is going to be replacing a chain link fence with a solid metal fence. Um, and this will provide safety and security. Um, the Santa Rosa Police Department approached the public art program to assist in beautifying this location and encourage um, community and youth involvement. Um, so here is an overview of the project location. Um, it is on Brookwood Ave side, um, and the police station's at Sonoma at Brookwood Ave. Uh, the artwork location or area will be on corrugated metal with steel posts, um, and the fence uh, dimensions are 250 feet long by eight feet tall. Uh, so looking at this from a public art perspective, um, we are really looking at diverse programs that uh, foster community engagement um, and vibrancy. Um, we're seeking to enhance Santa Rosa's character through meaningful artwork um, and create an engaging and visually appealing environment. 
The public mural is to be created. It's a one of a kind artwork that will help to enhance the beauty, creativity, and community in Santa Rosa. Um, the selected artists or teams are asked to collaborate directly with the youth of Santa Rosa in the design and or the execution of this mural, ensuring that the artwork reflects local values and perspectives. And the mural is being funded by the Santa Rosa Police Department, uh, which is why we're not seeking approval of the public art fund today. For the project goals, um, community engagement, fostering community pride, um, involving Santa Rosa youth directly in the design and implementation of this. Um, this will again ensure that this reflects the values of our community to enhance the public space, space um, to transform this fence into something that's visually appealing um, and contribute to the environment and character, promote artistic expression and have a meaningful impact on the visibility of this in our community, um, to strengthen community ties. Um, so using art as a medium that builds bridges between the artists, the police station and our community youth is really important. Um, and again, support youth involvement to empower your local youth uh, by engaging them in this artistic, artistic process. And the project budget um, is $9,000 and it should be inclusive of all artist fees, expenses related to design development, materials, um, travel installation of the artwork. Um, the finalists are invited to submit specific proposals will receive an honorarium of 250 for the design of their proposed project. Um, so we are looking at opening a request for qualification soon. Um, this would be open to all artists or artist teams residing in Sonoma County. Um, the artists applying need to demonstrate the ability to execute a successful mural project based on the project goals that we reviewed. Um, and this is an estimated timeline as um, today's already October. So these were slides from the last meeting. Um, so we'd ideally be looking at opening this up um, within the next few weeks, um, maybe even in a week. Um, and having it open for about six weeks, um, a selection panel review, um, and selecting some finalists um, to, to complete um, an RFP process. Um, and from those proposals, um, we would um, go to APPC for approval um, because it's a mural on city property. And um, then we'd go into contract in the final design phase um, and then the mural installation in the summer. So the recommended action today is to nominate two um, Art and Public Places members to serve on the selection panel for the fence, Police Fence Mural Project. Thank you. At this time, we'll take any questions from our committee. Does anyone have any questions for Meredith or the representative from the Police Department? I do have a question. I am, so I see it's $250 honorarium for mm -hmm. each finalist. It, what's the budget for, I mean, how many finalists are allowed within your budget? I believe we're looking at four because the $9,000, I don't remember correctly, the $9,000 was the artist budget and the, $1, the, the, full, the full project budget was 10,000. So okay. we were looking okay. at the 250 coming out of a separate. All right, yeah, that, that detail is helpful, thanks. I'll just make a comment. 250 feet um, is a really, that's a very big mural. Mm -hmm. uh, is the hope that the entire fence would be um, painted by the artist or um, is there some variation on that? Well, we're going to approach that in the um, RFP when they're completing it. That doesn't have to be completely painted. You know, there may be some large areas of color or just black um, because it is such a long, area mm -hmm. to span. I mean, how much detailed work can you do on that? So right. yeah. um, that 9,000 isn't a lot for exactly. that, that kind of expanse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Lisa? Yeah, the, I, I kind of want to echo of what you were putting on $9,000 for that large, because this fence is a great example of defensive and um, hostile architecture. And mm -hmm. we're trying to put this mural on 250 feet of it which yeah. is nine thousand dollars and trying to make something meaningful out of a hostile and defensive architecture really or having <laughs> i i'm having a hard time visualizing uh, what is even possible here 
So I'm just want to kind of get more of an explanation on what are what are you what are you really seeking and what are your visions of what's going to happen on this fence for that amount and um, for after this you know structure this really abrasive structure is put up and what it's going to do to the neighborhood by having it like that, because it is, it's gonna change the neighborhood when you have that large fence like that with that kind of architecture. And that's part of the reason that we, uh, the board suggested that we do our work on it. Like mm -hmm. Meredith mentioned, it is a safety concern kind of staff that work 24 seven to walk across the street mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. Um, we've had people outside taking photos of them. So we do wanna secure it as much as possible for our staff, uh, but we do wanna work with the neighborhood to make it beautiful. And um, Chief Cregan actually did a project many years ago in the Roseland area. Um, I don't remember what street that was on, but it was the running horses. Mm -hmm. um, and he'd love, he doesn't want, it doesn't have to be horses, but just something <laughs> like that, that um, really transformed that area. Are you talking about the horses over there and behind the fairgrounds? The, against the fence? Might be against the fence. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the album. I, yeah. that I do have some issues too with the horses. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason I have an issue with the fence is because the fence, those horses are to represent the horse races that are at the fairgrounds, which people who uh, who live in that area and those oh, there is some low income apartments and low income places and stuff. Betting at the horse races is not something they do. So you're having these horses to for people who do not live there to enjoy those seeing those rather than those embracing the community that's there. So that is my big issue with the ho those horses. If you're talking about that long strip over there, um, well, and, and definitely want something that's not political. We don't want it to represent the police department specifically. We want it to represent the community. So we don't want uh, any words or, or anything that can be taken differently by different population. Meredith, can you go back to the project location slide? And to reiterate, this fence will be along Brookwood Avenue. Is that correct? Yes, that's yes. the place where we'll be doing artwork. Okay. And the back along, which backs along the creek, that will also have this fencing, but we won't be doing that. And, and then the fence, I'm sorry, on this left side that you're looking at, that backs our neighbors. Um, it actually touches their property, so we're not going to touch that fence at all. That was their recommendation to the house, that we just leave their fencing as is. And then we'll be putting a gate in the front that the, that the block all traffic can be automated before I Is the uh, construction, um, the corrugated construction, is that finalized? It's That's what the fence will be, or yes. is that, okay, that's so there's finalized. no. I'm just thinking of Lisa's comments, if there's a more community friendly material mm -hmm. or something of that nature that could be used. Question I had was about the actual material of this fence. Mm -hmm. Is this known to be a material that can be painted on easily and then put a sealant on top of? That's our understanding. Yeah, and, and um, you can, but I'm, I'm looking at it um, more like a spray paint also, like getting in in there as a would be hard with brush. So those are all things that we're exploring of like the mean, that's excellent for the police department. Yeah. 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 Like, graffiti yeah. artists yeah. Totally. just tag the whole well, the thing. Idea too is a lot of these programs now also do work with those youths that are graffitiing and tagging mm -hmm. and and you know developing it into that art form, you know. Um so yeah, I agree. Um and I agree with your points as well. It has to be very closely looked at. Um, and, and, and titling it more of a community mural as well as what we're going looking at um, of the title of this work. So but all of your input is really valued. So I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Will there be a section in the RFP that does talk about the material of this fence and gives kind of like- Oh yeah. So um, the RFQ will have that as well. And then um, the RFP will dive further into with their proposals on, you know, on all of that. And um, it, are there limitations geographically for who will be eligible to um, 
We're opening Sonoma it up to County. artists in Sonoma County. Oh, okay. um, so and the then county. with the selection panel, um, those can be items that the selection panel looks like at as well as how are they going to um, involve youth in Sonoma County um, and particularly possibly this area um, and what we want to see from that artist. And will the uh, artist or artists, if there's a team selected, will they have an opportunity to meet with uh, the police and have a facilitation um, process to uh, connect to the community? Um, has that been thought out? Yeah, I think it depends on one the artist's proposal, but I would see that the police would, would very much want to meet with the artists that are selected for the RFP um, to start to do the kickoff meeting with that process. Um, we'd be having the chief most likely on that panel as well. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. I, uh, years ago, I was. Um, I always have a public art project in Richmond in the East Bay, and mm -hmm. we, we actually had the artists sit down with the chief of police, the mayor, some of the officers, um, and they were and the artists were graffiti artists. Mm -hmm. A couple of them had been arrested previously, so it was a really interesting <laughs> same, meeting. Yeah, but it turned out to be an amazing project. Oh, cool. uh, it was really educational for everybody to uh, sit down face yeah, to face. Yeah, that's for me doing that. Moving on, I'm going to open up public comment on this item. Does any member of the public want to speak on this item in particular? Seeing none, I will bring it back to our committee. Uh, we will need a motion in order to approve the mural. Um, and so our recommended action is to nominate two APP members for the selection panel. I'm you just mentioned, do we do we have to approve them? The, so you will end up itself? having to approve the mural after the RFP well, process. Okay, um, okay. right. It's a mural okay. that's going on city property. So we don't need an appro approval um, of the project. So today meeting. we're seeking to, to people to sit on the panel. Yeah. That's what our motion okay. is yes. today, is to yeah. nominate persons to the panel. I'd be interested in this panel. Do we have any other interest? I could also be interested in this panel. Um, You're on that other panel. I know. Can I see the timeline again so that I make sure that I'm not? It will probably be because that timeline was gone on there. Um, if I can get this open within the next week or two, we would be looking at um, a December um, virtual panel we would probably do um, for the first round um, if needed. Um, we could do, because this is just for the RFQ to select the, the top three, um, we would do in-person or virtual, depending, beginning January. Maybe with the holidays, it may be a little difficult, right? So, yeah. Lisa, you're on that other panel, too. I am, right? yeah. We're short-staffed here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there any conflict from the city's end of me being on several committee or selection panels at the same time. Does anyone have issue with that on our committee? Not at all. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion or I can't as chair. So. You know, just to be safe. <laughs> uh, Nathan or Lisa, would, would, since we're both nominated, when would you make a motion? Oh, for the um, to appoint us. For the <laughs> yeah, I'd like to nominate um, Kristen and Jeff Nathanson as uh, APPC members for the selection panel of the Police Fence Mural. We have a second. Nathan, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, <a> second. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll take a vote now. Um, Vice Chair Kiefer? Aye. Committee member Azadarian? Aye. Committee member Fuentes? Aye. Thank you. Committee member Nathanson? Aye. I'll let the record reflect that all present committee members are in favor. We can now move on. Great, thank you. All right, moving on to item 7.2, parking garage nine mural. Artist Chris McKee will present proposal for the mural on parking garage nine and our recommended action is a pure approval of mural design. I will pass it over to Meredith again. Yeah. Um, so today, Chris will be presenting uh, this project uh, that he is proposing. 
um, <clears throat> on parking garage. Okay, so uh, this is a project that was previously approved as a mural on the street that uh, we've moved it onto the wall instead of the street. <laughs> and it's a marker of where the historic uh, Santa Rosa Chinatown was. And uh, the goal of this mural will be to be a place marker as the reminder of where Chinatown in Santa Rosa was. Um, the, sorry. Um, it is the D Street parking garage, so it's right over here. Um, and Chinatown was 1st and 2nd Street between E and Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, and there was a project that described the history of Chinatown. I forget, um, was it a city project or? Cab. Cab Cab. Um, yeah, they got that pool. And so we want to actually have a QR code on there so that they can be connected to the history of that project. And um, then on to, so for um, oh yeah, and so this this was the image that was approved for a similar image in 2022. Um, it was just slightly modified because it's a rectangle rather than a square on the crosswalks. Um, and um, the maintenance plan and install plan would be to use city scaffolding and spend about a weekend with um, volunteers from uh, the Chinese, the Redwood Chinese, uh, Redwood Empire, Chinese, Redwood Empire, Empire Chinese, Chinese Association. And so as a group, we would create mural. Um, and the uh, we would do the background in the lower levels, uh, and then I would complete all the higher levels. And um, then I would want to have another week available to finish up things, because I don't know, we're going to have to be able to work with you guys on <laughs> when it's yeah. closed off or where I, where I can work. Um, and um, I was asked about maintenance on this, and so uh, most of the projects that I've done, um, usually I work on the project and then it's up to wherever it's going to be part of the maintenance, but we discussed anti-graffiti coding and I'd be able to apply that. I've done that on many of the murals I've done. And uh, Chad, just in, um, Chad and parking as well is, is going to help with this. Um, purchasing some right now for another project that we have on hand. Um, but the city could apply it towards the start, so that's great. Um, artist qualifications. Um, I've been a muralist and art teacher for the past 21 years in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County. Um, I have numerous murals around the city, um, including my one of my projects when I was younger was all the parking garages. That's what I did when I was like 17 through 21. And uh, I also attached a resume to the files, but I don't know if you guys. I never see that as an attachment. Funding source for this, it was gonna be previously previously funded by a cab grant, but because we have switched what it is um, to make it so that the funding will work, it's gonna be privately funded. And uh, we're gonna be working with trying to do a fundraiser or different things just to get the paint supplies and then I'll donate my time, so. Um, artist selection, uh, the previous artist who was working on this project, decided that they're retiring. And so she yes. selected that <laughs> yeah. I would help because I have 
good amount of experience working with public projects mm -hmm. and that she felt that I could <laughs> complete it for her. And uh, yeah. the, I mean, we were talking about the last barrel I just did was 144 feet by 12 feet at the Hattery. So that was the last mural I just did. And so have a lot of experience working with people and getting projects like this done. So. Thank you, Chris. All right, I'll bring it back to our committee now for questions at this time. Questions for staff, artist team, Redwood Empire, yeah. Chinese. Can I just say quickly, I really appreciate Chris take over this project because the former um, the artist, Judy um, Kennedy, Kennedy mm -hmm. she came to us. We had a, during the pandemic, we had so many meetings, help her to get a, select the design to represent, you know, combined with the Chinese culture, the lotus was come out at first in our mm -hmm. mind. So we we're so exciting, got a pool, everything waiting for the straight pave. That's what we've been told. We wait and wait, and she had some problems, so she find the Chris to take over. Then we found out from the crossing straight, move to the wall. So that's why we say this is a so important project. Another for Chinese association is important for the community because we've been asked, where's, where, where was the Chinatown? We never can give in. This is why our city does not have anything to present the history uh, Chinatown was. Because you go to all the different city, they all have something. The Chinatown was there. They got a lot of mirror or whatever they present the Chinatown was there. Not in city center also. That's why our association stepped in to help Judy. But now Chris did a beautiful job. I really, really, really pleased. You know, he's spent the effort and the uh, could you tell us a little bit about how the decision was made to move from the ground up to the parking garage? I have no idea what they did. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> we were way fully informed. Where? Yeah, issue. I think that was a city. City. Yeah. I don't know, city decision or city issue, but something happened. But I, I actually they don't. don't they, I think they felt on the street. It's on the ground, mm -hmm. and the street need to pave every four years or something. Maybe longevity. Yeah, longevity. So maybe move to the wall is the best. And the chart yeah. the matching, we had to mix with the graffiti material, make sure can easy to watch out. Because we know graffiti is a terrible thing. And we involved with the dragon on the the the, 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 the trail. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we got involved with that too to have to remake the, the dragon hat. So this is just something really exciting, important. Uh, if the city can allow us to have this in close to what's Chinatown, <laughs> the real Chinatown, <laughs> okay. but it's close enough because we have no place can you know try to put this piece. To, the uh, art is important, like the people to know we can pro provide the, the history, 1880. I think so, 1880 to like 1940, yeah, because excursion mm -hmm. out the the law to push all the Chinese people out of this area. So every everything's disappeared. Thank you for the background. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Pretty much right where we are right now. Right. Yes. Yeah. Where, where's the QR code located? It will be, uh, on the... it will be so, so small. For how big that mural is, yeah. it wouldn't maybe, show maybe up in the design. Something. It's just going to be like on the corner. A and little... and would are... it be in the blue or in the border? Um... So it will most likely be, so it's going to be at people level. It will most likely be on like a leaf. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it will be like white, white back clear to it. Yeah. so that you can see that it's something separate. That someone will actually want to go see. That's why no meaning. What's this lotus? You know, maybe somebody even doesn't know what's this flower. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I remember um, when we were discussing this previously that there was a discussion because it was going to be um, on pavement 
in the intersection yeah. that there would be most likely a, a plaque nearby that would have yes. not right. only the QR code, but just the basic information. You know, this is uh, Chinatown was in this particular location from these years and for more information. And, and, and I think it would be appropriate to identify the artist and maybe uh, lying about why the lotus flower. Uh, I think it, we can't assume everybody's going to take their smartphone and yeah. follow the QR code. I think I, from my experience, it's really important to have some basic information yeah. on the plaque, wherever that goes. Uh, but, but not the bra. Don't make them not bronze. bronze. Bronze, oh, no, no. because no, our no. cemetery at the Chennai being stole. Every yeah, and, well, and, and I don't even know if we, you, we put it there. Too, I don't no. think you can do a QR code on a bronze plaque anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that works. I mean, I, we well, could, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we discussed uh, plaque. So you see the cement right next to it? Mm -hmm. That was an idea of a possible if we wanted to do a plaque where yeah. it goes yeah. right yeah. next to it. Yeah. Just to yeah, identify it, what yeah. meaning behind it. That's right. Yeah. When I first saw this, I was like, okay, lotus flowers, and they can have so much me meaning behind it for yes. so many different, uh, you know, cultures and stuff. And so when you're explaining to me what it means and what it means to you and the significance of it, I think that's so important to have that there and for people to know that there was a train account you. and mm -hmm. it was there. It was there because I visit Santa Cruz, uh, San Jose, even I think as uh, Teresa Noma, they all have something there, you know, just and we desperately you know, with something. our association, every the people moving in now, non-Chinese, they will find us. Where is the where was the Chinatown? Yeah. I said, well, in downtown somewhere we're working on, we're working on. So definitely we are really asking the art, uh, I mean of this project and we hope we got some budget to do that. Yeah. If you really doesn't have a, we will do the fundraiser uh, to get this thing done. We're we can work together on the okay. clock because we're looking at that for all the public art pieces that yeah, we mm -hmm. have. So um, for consistency. Mm -hmm. But it definitely, I'd like to also see some kind of identification you're of right. it you're right. Right. Yeah. to be, you know, visual, uh, just that visual of identification right away to the, the meaning behind that. Yes, we did in the dragon, uh, put it there in um, English and Chinese. Yes. Okay. What's the dragon? Actually, that is not our project. It's okay. just a city project. And it's something an happened uh, for Phoebe that took the dragon head out, so they reached out to us that we got this idea going. But they don't allow to have our association's logo because it's a, a Caltrain um, property. property. So mm -hmm. we did a, a Saran Wrap. We had a Chinese without our logo, just the Chinese English meaning what's the dragon meaning for the city okay. in the Chinese yes. culture. Mm -hmm. We wow. did that. All right, just to keep things going along with our committee, I'm going to open public comment on this item. I'd like to ask one more. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think this looks great, but it's a little bit hard to see exactly what's going on. Are there any other reference photos that we could look at, just in terms of paint handling? This, this is just the only image we have to. That's the only image. Oh, okay. the, yes. um, uh -huh. So there's going to be a slight um, outline and a chromatic black on all of it. And it's going to be just modeled paint, like blended, mm -hmm. so gradations, and then just a solid background. So that's mm -hmm. how it's going to be. Um, <coughs> a lot of what I do is just sort of like, sort of simplified. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to be sort of smooth, just painting. It's not going to be. Um... I know with your concerns, uh, if with the expert, I mean, tell you that's the history, the lotus is really represent the Chinese culture too. Uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. not that just the uh, either dragon or lion or temple. You know, whatever the traditional Chinese. That's not the only way to represent it. Oh, uh, the Chinese. I'm just curious about the execution. 
Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Well, we did have, uh, we, we had a preliminary design that was similar. The lotuses were closer together and it was basically clip art off the internet. Uh -huh. yeah. That was Judy Kennedy's design. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And uh, this I this thought much, was much more artist, artsy and aesthetically pleasing. And, um, uh, it doesn't look to me like uh, clip art. So for... So I did a resume. Would it be possible? Should I send copies of other murals that I've done as something to this board? Or no, not for today because not we're for today, people obviously. already. Yeah. So and, yeah, okay, yeah. Just, and our committee is really just approving this yeah, design, design as design. we're talking yeah. about it today. Mm -hmm. Okay, we understand that the funding mechanism is mm -hmm. not controlled by our. Committee, so yeah. that is a different process, and we'll stay tuned on the timeline of this installation. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, our our committee is talking about the design. Design. And I had one question: um, Would there be a way to incorporate maybe some wording along there to say "in memory of Chinatown" or, or I mean, something to to a if we allow it. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, it. and we can write it. We, we can, can it together. Uh, with the yeah, with the mm -hmm. both language to do that. Yeah, yeah it's um, right in English and in Chinese. Yeah. But that that would just be a way of maybe either putting that on the sign or incorporating that into the artwork itself. Um, so what do you think? Into the artwork or onto the plaque? Because I think you're talking about the plaque, right? I. I question was, do you think that that could be incorporated in the artwork or do you think it would be better on a plaque? I think it would be better on a plaque. Okay. Um, <laughs> he doesn't want to ruin it. Well, <laughs> I think, so my view on public art is it should be universal for people to see art as itself. And then plaque is where he then describes the context behind it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we could provide the words and all. Yeah. And if we have that side cement, it looks like it could be any size that you allow us. I write a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the plaque would be an approval through a different had to be yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And I would encourage for that to be in both English and Chinese. Yes, yes. definitely. Mm -hmm. and Mandarin. Okay, we can have con yes. can continue our discussion that after our public comment, right? but yes. I just want to go through these. No. Okay, Mandarin. Just Mandarin. Okay. All right. Uh, opening public comment. Does anyone else want to speak on this item from the public? Seeing none, I will now close public comment. Uh, if there is a motion, we can either vote right away or have more discussion. Can I get? Committee member to make a motion on this so that we can continue our discussion today. I I will make a motion to um, approve um, the mural design by um, artist Chris McKee and um, on the parking garage nine. Second. Great. I want to continue our conversation. Just wanted to mention that on the city's website they do not list garage nine under the parking facilities. <laughs> they say the D Street garage, and mm -hmm. I know that difference, but I just thought that would be an interesting yes. point that we should have it consistent between yeah. all, all publications on our city's correspondence. It's gotta be, it's gotta be Chad's fault. Chad. <laughs> He's not here. He's not exactly. Here. <laughs> yeah. I so I just wanted to offer that That's point of clarification. I've worked the garage so far. Does any other committee member have any motion or, I'm sorry, any comment to say about? Actually, I have a question for Chris. Um, <laughs> just following up on Nathan's question earlier. So it sounded to me like what you were describing is rather than a painterly approach to the mural in terms of your, your process and the paint application, you um, are thinking it, your, your style is a bit more graphic and um, maybe more flat. This will be more graphic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. And this is Nova color? Or um, have you frozen in paint yet? So I go between Nova color and I go with <laughs> just house paint that's like a higher grade. Yeah. Typically, a lot of times I'll do house paint because then it's, I give people like a whole 
graphic of what colors I used so that they can yeah, clean up graffiti. Sure. But if this is going to be anti-graffiti coded, it's going to probably have no color. Or... Okay. I mean, we're always concerned about um, how fugitive the colors are in on, and making sure that they're not going to fade in, right. in direct sunlight. Yeah. Um, when I select colors for other murals, a lot of times I'm <laughs> keeping that in mind because this one's seems like the least amount of light that I've had in a long time on a mural. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, east facing rather than the last one was south facing, another south facing before that, and just like 110 degrees while I'm working. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Thanks for the conversation, everyone. I think we'll move to a vote. Ready. Jack, if you could facilitate. Of course. Uh, Vice Chair Kiefer? Yes. Committee Member Azadarian? Aye. Committee Member Puentes? Aye. Committee Member Nathanson? Aye. Does the record reflect that all present committee members are in favor? The motion passes. Great. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Look forward Thank you. to seeing that. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on to scheduled item 7.3, public art toolkit. Staff will present draft public art proposal form. And our recommended action today is approval of the public art proposal form following discussion. Meredith, I'll yeah. hand it over to you. All right, so moved from thank you. the, thank you, from the September agenda. Um, was the public art proposal form. I'm titling this public art toolkit because there's been um, a lot of discussion prior to me as well, what I could find on creating public art toolkits for the community. So um, I dove in a bit and I have our strategic plan here with me as well on um, an overview of what we currently have and um, what are we looking at for toolkits and on this public art proposal form of what I'm hoping to do uh, with it and for the community. So currently, um, our public art program has a variety of tools and guidelines that are set in place for our community. Um, we have our public art master plan, which is our large guiding document. Um, this outlines our vision, mission, and goals. It establishes the priorities, which is broken into creative zones in this master plan. Um, it recommends policies and procedures, um, such as selecting panels, community engagement, how to staff, how to utilize our communications. Uh, this public art master plan, for me, I think it was about 2015. So um, this is something that we will be wanting to revise uh, probably next year. Um, we have the public art policy which sets our funding structure for the public art program. Um, it has the process of an annual work plan and, and project plan approval. It goes through the role of the OPC um, and also the process of gifts, loans, and artwork removal. And so that policy that is approved by council, master plan is approved by council as well, really sets us up um, for hopefully success, right, with our program, having these rules for the community in place of um, also guidelines of, of where we're going and how we're going to do it. Uh, we also have the public art and project development, the 1% for art ordinance. Um, and through that, we have um, two different types of applications, a preliminary application, a final application, and a developer flowchart for those that we send out, and those are available on our website. Right now for our guidelines, so for the community, if they wanted to create public art, um, in Courthouse Square, that's um, putting a sculpture there. We don't have any guidelines or a way that they could approach us besides coming to an APPC meeting. Um, there's nothing for them to complete. Um, we have the mural guidelines. Um, however, it's not a forum. It's, um, it's set up into questions of this is how it will be presented to APPC. Um, and then lastly, we have our street forum permit, which is an application process available online. So looking at this, um, and then I dove into our strategic plan a bit on um, what the definition in our strategic plan, a toolkit was. Um, and this was to build a presence at neighborhood level by creating toolkits that provide steps to engage with us, resources for other opportunities outside of the public art program, and other information that could be helpful to local artists and communities to create neighborhood art on their own. So none of those are actually 
a public art proposal form, right? Um, <clears throat> so we have them. We have multiple items of of um, of our policy, our forms, and what I'm looking to do with our um, public art proposal form is is get rid of the mural guidelines and have this just be one um, form for the community that's available online. Um, it could be a fillable form. We'll make it in Spanish um, and they'll be able to print it. Ideally, we just outreach with this to make sure the community and anyone has know that, yes, you can get public art in your community. Um, one of the issues I found reading through the strategic plan was that there was talk about doing um, a rapid response to public art um, and not with something that they were looking to create was a rapid response for the community to put art in the public realm. The issue with that is that as you see some of these questions, there's safety, there's durability, there's maintenance, there's, so as much as we want to be a rapid response and want to encourage the community to do public art, we also have to look at safety, maintenance, and we're governments, right? And so, so um, we want to be fair. Um, and so we have to take all of this into consideration. My hope is with this form and making it available to everyone is that um, it will start to break down those barriers of saying, yes, you can do that too. Because some artists that have been doing art for a long time in the community, they know the process already. They know they can come to APPC and get a mural approved, but we want to make sure all types of art are able to come here, whether it's um, a performance from the college, whether it's um, some artists in Roseland that wanted to like, put up some sculptures in a park there. Um, I want to really make sure this is available to everyone. So the next steps, I'm seeking approval of the public art proposal form um, as it's one of our guidelines. And um, the next step I'd like to create is a public art flow chart for the community. So um, they can sort of see if this, then that, how do I, um, how do I get this approval and where do I go next? Uh, we're currently updating our website and um, on the homepage of our arts and culture page, I wanna make sure all of these forms are available right there. Um, so that also with our calls for art, so that way, right now, nothing's really on the website and it's hard to, it's hard to um, navigate. And then um, furthermore, in the future, I wanna go back to um, the definition of the toolkit and the strategic plan with you and really look at these steps and think about how can we enact this in our community um, and make those resources available and what are those steps that the community can engage with us. So today, I am, I don't have a slide for that. Um, I am <laughs> seeking approval um, to adopt the public art proposal form as a guideline for our arts program. Thank you. All right, I'll bring it back to our committee for comments and questions. Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, so if I'm, let's say I'm, I'm an artist and, and I'm going, going to submit this, um, sending an email to the economic development oh. email address. It, it, it seems a little confusing. And sorry, that is updated. Um, okay. We just started an arts at srcity.org oh. email. So Great. That, okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So my and that's recommendation that's is, that's and that's you've that's already that's anticipated that's my question. <laughs> um, and under contact information, um, I think it's really good if there's it's an organization that we find out if it's a nonprofit or not. But I think the wording "Are you a nonprofit?" is a is a little uh, bit funny. It's the organization. Is the organization a nonprofit? Yes or no? I, mean, I see that uh, a lot. Yeah. Are, are you a nonprofit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In, in <laughs> arts application. Yeah, yeah. that's it's, interesting. It's, Thanks for it's, it, I know it is. It's just it, it it's yeah. it's one of those details and mm -hmm. and. You know the way it's phrased. It's like yeah. anyway. I, I suggest that, but uh, yeah, it looks good though. I, I think it's a really great idea to have a uniform application. So no matter what the type of public art proposed, and the um, zip code's incorrect too. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? No, oh, it's my Sonoma zip code. I'm always doing that. No, no, it is. <laughs> And so what was the email again? I'm sorry. It's arts, um, A-R-T-S at uh, srcity.org. Got it. And that will be the new email that will be listed on our website on all forms. Because right now, um, with staffing changes and everything, 
you know, just having that one blanket email to some people would be nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see that the form asks if this is being proposed as permanent or temporary. Am I? Yeah, it's on the first page. Oh, it, on the first page, it, bottoms under project information. Oh, there it is. The artwork okay, proposed you know, permanent or temporary. Got it. And yeah. I also want to note that um, this will be amendable to, um, you know, we bring if I if you email me and someone wants to see something, you can always bring it forth to a meeting. Um, one of the items that I was looking at was uh, maybe a question about like diversity, equity, and inclusion of some sorts. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't know what we want to ask and how. Um, but the more I dive mm -hmm. into our strategic plan, there may be something that we pull from there that we want to apply in this. Um, so I'd be open to feedback throughout the process. If you come across someone, we could always bring this forward again to the meeting. I, I think there is language in some of the RFPs that have gone out or RFQs that... Um, uh, pr proposals uh, that are inclusive and ce celebrate diversity or any language of that nature is just yeah. um, included. I'm pretty sure the language exists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is really exciting. Thank you for moving mm -hmm. forward. Um, but do you, do you have a sense of what the sort of workflow might be? If I like, I have no idea what, what level of application we might anticipate. Well, you know, for instance, the um, even the, the previous mural, um, yeah. I set up some questions in, in the mural guidelines to answer to bring forth to the meeting, but we didn't receive anything that we can have on record to so even do an internal review yeah. first before we mm -hmm. bring it to you. Because if I read something and say. Well, you know, they're, um, they don't have the funding sources or uh, the waste, they don't have a waste management plan. And I think this is going to be an issue with the water, stormwater, and creeks. Um, I don't know. We have this in Napa, and, and we, would, we wouldn't get too many, but this is also, I don't want to create a roadblock for anyone, but I also want to ensure that all of our questions and everything's looked at in a fair and equal way. Um, I hope we get a lot, you know, I think this would be really exciting for, um, all the communities and this would help us with arts equity in different neighborhoods yes. too, yeah. mm -hmm. so we can look at like, where are these projects coming in? Yeah. How are we funding them? So if they're requesting money from the public art fund, then that's something we would look at together of, of that. And where is this funds going? Is all going directly to downtown or are we, are we starting to spread it out in all the communities? It might be a really useful way to allocate you know, small amounts of funding strategically mm -hmm. that could have a size impact. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great point. The um, mural guidelines, um, I'm not, I, I, actually, do you, is it possible for you to put them up on the screen or something? But I guess my, my question has to do with guidelines for public art that include some of the things that people should really be aware of in terms of content, uh, offensive content and, or things, political content, th things that might be automatically rejected by the city just because the, the city does, isn't probably going to allow, let's say, a particular political group to put forth their messaging. And that's a great point. So maybe in addition to this, we create a public art guidelines of things that are not allowed. Um, so I do have the mural guidelines with me. I mean, it isn't technically a um, design guidelines or anything that's like offensive. It's more identify the location. If it's city-owned property, the budget, describe your project, identify the artists, be prepared to present your design and images, sketches to APPC, get on the APPC agenda. So it's simple, they're the questions of how to, but it's not um, completing something. So I and agree. It doesn't give the opportunity for any other form of artwork. Mm -hmm. I would say both of the proposals that we saw today are quite complex in terms of their political content kind of historical ramifications, you know, once we start yeah. to discuss these things. 
And I see something like this as a, as a, a way to create an opportunity to have a, some discussion around those questions with the outside of this rather compressed mm -hmm. time frame for execution. Um, I, you know, I don't know what kind of reservoir they go into once they arrive well, and maybe at the city. Yeah, and maybe what we look at is if um, if I approve something, I bring it to you even before they propose it to you, and yes. come and you guys do a review. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'd have to look at our own internal guidelines if that's possible too. But I mean, I, and I like that idea because sometimes when they come to you, it sort of may feel like a quick turnaround, and, and things do need to be thought out. You know, thinking about content, uh, Sonia, I just um, last month had the opportunity to travel to Bangkok and we were at a, uh, an open market that I turned the corner and there was this huge wall and the mural was depicting sort of a cartoon representation of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen similar images in representations of this horrible uh, virus. And there's this um, young girl standing in front of this um, huge COVID that's about, you know, 10 times her size. And she's got a mask on and she's basically, you know, flipping the bird at this. And I, and I loved this mural. I took a, a photo of it and, and I thought, and now we're talking about this. It's like, basically, if the if the artwork is saying F you to something like that, I would love to see that mural, but I don't know if that would be appropriate for us to, I mean, it's not spelled out mm -hmm. F U C K, but it's like, it's the gesture. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think, you know, hmm, how would we feel if somebody proposed something like that to us? I know the city attorney has been the central figure of questions pertaining to the distribution of funds to the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if they have the last word on these kinds of questions or if that falls to us. The distribution of funds. No, oh, sorry, um, content. What's, okay. what's offensive? Yeah. How do you define offense? Yeah, I know in, in Napa we have strict guidelines over all the different things. I know Caltrans has strict guidelines over that. I mean, being government, you know, it is walking a fine line, but you also want to, you know, if you appreciate different values and perspectives as well. So, um, yeah, it is interesting when you travel and you're like, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, it's probably, I think that wall was a private wall on yeah, the side of the store. Likely. So, yeah. um, that would probably, yeah. you know, if some, you know, property owner wanted to put that mural up, everybody would be like, oh, that's cool. But yeah, I don't think it could be officially sponsored by a municipality. <laughs> that would be questionable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I have a question about under the project information mm -hmm. where it says, are you using city property? Yes or no. And then there's the question, are you requesting funding from public artists? Mm -hmm. So if the project is on not city property, so mm -hmm. private property, and they're not requesting public funds. Do you see that there being a reason why they would come to our committee? Or, or I'm, I'm just yeah, no, it's good. Um, I'm ask one that. example was the mural on um, at the Greenway that was painted on concrete, the star. Okay. That's not city property. <laughs> it's over by the Hyatt, um, and they still saw. I believe they sought approval through the committee just to have that um, because it's in of some sort so there could be these one-offs so it's not city property um, but they're seeking approval um this the public art funds would always have to be used on city property uh, so that it may be a one-off on one of those um with public art funds um if they're not using public art funds but they're still looking at doing that city property um we would want um, an approval of some sorts or at least a review so your end right for this mm -hmm. it's on city well, property and, in the APPC guidelines you re, you approve mural designs but you don't approve public art proposals that are not using public art funds I think that's what I'm looking at so I think when we re-look at doing the master plan next year and the, um, we could look at policy and everything of okay now we're adopting these new guidelines mm -hmm. what else do we have to revise and really dive into 
develop our programs more. Sorry, we're not, our involvement is not required in projects that don't involve public art funds. Or are, yes. So if they're not using public art funds, and, and those are specifically earmarked for but it's not, public art projects? So in the guidelines, it says that you review and approve proposals for murals that receive city funding uh, okay. or are located on city property. Okay. So um, yeah. that's why you will need to approve the police gotcha. mural because it's on city property. Yeah. Um, but it's not talking about um, public art projects that are outside of murals. Right. It's similar to what that mural guidelines form was. So I think this will end up needing to be revised. This is the way I see it. Um, after we get approval for this, let's really start diving into all the other uh, process. And what do you see as the timeline for putting this on our website? What? I'm just um, I'm just getting access now to the website to start updating it. I'm hoping by the end of the year is my goal to have even if the homepage and some things cleaned up. Um, I want to make this live. Um, along with some other forms, you know, and just like the um, master plan, the policy. So everything is all in one section mm -hmm. of the website for everyone. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Another question that comes to mind, it's uh, kind of a question. Um, so I know we typically stay away from defining public art because we want it to be as inclusive as possible. Um, but I'm just thinking about you know, someone from the, from the public looking at this form and they're like, well, I don't really know if it's public art or not. Mm -hmm. Do we, do we want to provide any guidelines for, or kind of like? Um, what I could do is look at how we define public art already. I believe that was cool. possibly redefined in our strategic plan. Okay. Um, but I want to make sure it's just inclusive of all. Yeah, I, I would want performance, to. Performance. Um, and so when you start listing then you're going to forget someone. Yes. And so I think, um, and possibly we can at that end too. Um, but I think when it comes down to the outreach of this, once it's done, um, in Spanish, English, fillable form, all of that, we can start looking at how are we out using this as a tool to outreach to all different types of arts okay. and what needs to then be updated or we miss, right? Um, but I think this is a good first start after saying. I think so too. We need to get the ball rolling yeah. before we can refine it yeah also following your earlier question it seems to me that it might be helpful to have a couple examples of what city property is side you know what i mean like sidewalk public park you know just to kind of i don't know we're road closure for a block party you know what i mean well the road closure wouldn't be this the block party would be more permit Okay. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying, I, but I think, and possibly we do, my fear is, is once I start listing yeah. what a city property is, I've probably missed something because mm -hmm. there's a lot of city owned buildings, yeah. there's city parks, there's private area in the park. Um, and so we would look at the GIS map and, and make sure whatever their location is, that is city property. Yeah. I can maybe even put like do they not know or something, but they could write that in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe it's just something that gets hashed out. If we have we've come across sure. something that a lot of people are running into roadblocks in our questions, and that's where we work on that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I think this was a really fruitful conversation so yeah. far today. Yeah. Um, so moving forward, uh, I'm going to open public comment. And I'm going to close public comment. <laughs> uh, we will need a motion in order to approve the form. Would someone like to make a motion? Sure. I move to approve the public art proposal form, including the changes <laughs> and revisions that were discussed today. And I just want to follow up that I might come up with another comment leading to this. So I would like to keep an open email dialogue with you yeah. on this. I invite any other members of our committee to do so as well. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can word my motion um, to reflect that. So um, I move to approve the public art proposal form, uh, which will include revisions discussed today and 
um, possible other revisions in order to refine it. <laughs> Can we get a second? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll second that. Great. Jack, if you could take a vote. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Vice Chair Keeper. Yes. Committee Member Asadarian. Aye. Committee Member Puentes. Yes. And Committee Member Nathanson. Aye. All right, let the record reflect that all present committee members have voted yes tonight. The uh, motion passes. Thank you. Great. Yes. Thank you. Just letting our committee know, I do have a hard stop at 5.30, so I will be conscious of time for the remainder of our meeting. Yeah, I'll mention that in previous meetings, we usually try to wrap up by five, so yes. um, I, I think that would be great to keep these to an hour and a half if we possibly can. Yes. All right, and, and thank you, Meredith, for this. This is great. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. All right, and let's the spirit of timeliness, I will move on to our next item. Uh, 7.4 temporary art walk. Staff will present a program update for the temporary art walk. And this is a discussion only. Yeah. And uh, thank you. This again was moved from the last meeting as we went through the slides together and we started to have further discussion. So um, it was recommended that we sit on it and think about what we wanna do. And I bring it back forward. Um, today, it is just a discussion because of, according to the guidelines, I will be bringing this back to you with a project up, um, proposal for you to approve to move forward with it, which um, may have to be a special meeting this month, depending on our timeline. <laughs> um, so um, if you'd like, I can walk through the slides again, just to refresh your memory of what we've talked about. Um, that'd be great. So uh, program overview, um, we're dedicated to enhancing civic life, showcasing the city's artistic spirit, spirit and solidifying San Rosa status as a premier arts destination. And that is all taken from our public art master plan. Uh, on August 5th, uh, the committee approved an expenditure plan of 75,000 for a temporary art program. Um, that includes a one-time fee of um, concrete paths that will be poured in-house. Um, and I did receive a quote of about $10,000 for those paths, which is less than um, what I budgeted for. Um, and so more discussion was noted that we um, continue to talk about how to move forward with this install um, spring 2025 and mainly more summer 20. Um, we've been busy scouting some locations. Um, some of these are not available currently, um, but the idea is to have locations available. So when artwork does come in um, to be selected and judged, that um, it's not just plop art, that we're really starting to look at uh, how is this placed um, throughout downtown, connecting Railroad Square and downtown. The program goals will be to foster civic, civic excitement, um, art that engages with our community, um, to encourage creativity, um, be a platform that's innovative and imaginative. Um, I imagine this, um, you know, partnering with a lot of organizations, schools, having um, art art walk tours, um, possibly audio tours, um, support artistic growth. Um, so we can experiment with new ideas, reach new audiences, um, again, partner with local schools, transform our public spaces. Um, so start to transform downtown into more of a dynamic um, destination and offer learning experiences. Those are really important to me with our programming. Um, so whether it's workshop, artist talks, um, doing videos on our social media about the artwork, um, you know, having temporary artwork that changes can be really exciting for a community and we can really build programs on this. Um, so, um, and again, as I discussed at last meeting, these are all my ideas and I'm not hurt if you guys want to totally do something different, but we got to start somewhere. So, um, the request for proposals, um, and again, we'd be going directly to a request for proposals, not an RFQ, um, because the artwork would have to already be made. Um, so this would be open to U.S. artists, um, 18 or older, submissions um, only of previously completed works, um, up to eight selected artists with three alternates. It's really important to have the alternates because um, sometimes an artist drops out or something selected and we come across it and saying, I don't think we can fit that there, right? Um, artists to receive a $5,000 stipend, $3,000 on the install and $2,000 on the deinstall. So that's important to note that whatever we do decide of the stipend, one, you'll want to split it up somehow. Two, that's not come, all coming out of this year's budget. 
um, so we can prepare um, for the two years for them to re be receiving whatever that 2K is or whatever we decide. Um, the artwork would either be mounted to concrete pads um, or other mounting would be accepted with approval. Um, whether it's hanging artwork or whatnot, it would have to be durable for um, over a long we decide the artwork block to be. Um, and then the artwork locations will be finalized with selected artists and best fit. Um, the suggested theme was urban renewal. Um, and I know last uh, meeting we discussed not doing a theme, um, which I actually agree upon as well. Um, um, I liked the um, I liked the theme of, of Jack uh, off the wall, but Jack told me what was a converse uh, converse or vans? Vans, yeah. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like an open air gallery off the wall, and then he's like, "Well, that's vans." So, <laughs> <laughs> but something of that sort of like a temporary art walk that's not a specific theme, but it has its own name and brand. Um, Anyways, my first video is urban renewal. Um, so our vision of renewal and innovation, um, playfulness and innovation, um, we embrace creativity and inventiveness. Um, it could be kinetic work, it could have a light element. Um, it could also uh, promote sustainability, it's really important. So we could using recycled or eco-friendly materials, um, have community impact. Um, how does our artwork foster community engagement and interaction? So when we're looking at selecting these pieces, um, you know, how do we look at that um, with our programming and, and how can we um, partner with the local schools with that piece? Are they a local artist, et cetera? Um, and the durability and maintainability will be really important um, with a selection panel um, on these artworks. The estimated timeline, and this will, um, well, maybe not if we get approval. So the, um, the APPC approval and project plan um, would be this month. Um, and then I'd be looking up to open a request for proposals um, by November. Uh, we would host do a selection panel for up to eight final artworks in three alternates. And um, then those artwork artists would need to be approved by APPC. Um, so ideally, if we could get that in by end of this year, beginning of next year, um, contracts take time. We'll have to pour the pads. Um, and so we could have an install um, around May, June next year for summer. Um, so the discussion items I have here, um, and feel free to add in um, other items you'd like to discuss on this, um, would be the name for a temporary art walk. I call it temporary art walk, but I would like to be something creative. Um, uh, program goals and duration, uh, the theme of this art walk, and um, RFP guidelines, if any, that you'd want to suggest. Thank you, Meredith. Mm -hmm. We'll bring it back to our committee. Good conversation. So the name, so it's downtown, it's an art walk, it's temporary. I also wanted to note that we have our civic art walk, um, which is our permanent art walk. Mm -hmm. um, and another item I'll probably bring forward to you in the future is just changing that to permanent art collection on our website because it's actually not, we have such a huge permanent art collection. Um, I don't know how much of a walk that is, so um, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just gonna mention this because I was in Emeryville on Friday for the opening of their annual celebration of the arts. And uh, I picked up one of their art and public places guides over 600 pieces of artwork. Wow. Um, but you know, it's this fold out map, which anyway, but it, it's, it's actually a really nice little piece because it's so compact. Um, but, you know, I was thinking about this and what you just mentioned, the existing public art for a minute. So um, it'd be nice to have a, a really catchy title. Uh, out of the frame could be a good idea. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not. Taking Vans logo. <laughs> <laughs> or Vans took our logo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. Well, off the wall, I mean there's there's galleries with yeah. that name and mm -hmm. uh, there's a reason Van used it because it's actually good. <laughs> I think out of the frame is fun because then it's it you know taking it outside of that. I guess perception that we have art being a fine art experience and you're separated from the artwork. And, are we really thinking about this being three-dimensional art, like a, a sculpture walk? Is 
Yes, I don't want to restrict us to a sculpture walk because there are some beautiful pieces that can be hung um, that I've seen that are durable for two years that are almost like these woven things out of um, like plastic or something, you know, um, lining alleyways. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to restrict the call to just sculptural. Um, and But I do think that the restrictions may come with how, how however many years we would like this up, right? I'm thinking two years because by the time we get things in, we have all these other projects going on. The deinstall takes time too. We want to develop some programming around it, et cetera. How about the square to square art walk or something like that? So we're going square from square to corner house square. Square, square. square. So is this potentially a biennial event with mm -hmm. a new exhibition every two years? Yes. Uh, are you considering? Uh, the possibility of guest curators in the budget over the, over the in the long term. I would love to explore that opportunity. Um, I know it's written in our um, public art master plan those options. Yeah. I don't know how much we've done that before, but I think those are great opportunities yeah. for sure. Yeah, and you would be acting in that role essentially. I mean, in addition to all the other stuff for this first year. Well, we'd have a selection panel, so I'm not okay. I'm not curating. Okay. Um, you know, I'm helping facilitate, okay. but I wouldn't be on the selection panel. We'd have you on the two, probably on the selection panel, some other arts, uh, maybe a community member. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I was actually the juror for the Cloverdale sculpture mm -hmm. um, exhibit this year. And then there are some similarities mm -hmm. to, to what's being described here. Mm -hmm. Actually, one thing um, interesting, one of the artists assembled her mixed media work on one of the sculpture pads and it, but it was not a pre-made work but the proposal for the piece was that she would assemble it from various components mm -hmm. on site which actually helps with this concept of a site specific work so she made it for the the, the particular location so i think in the guidelines change that I yeah I would recommend that submissions yeah I, I think submissions of either previously completed artworks or art weeks artworks that can be assembled right. on site something of that nature that being said unfortunately even though I know the artist I think it was one of the least successful works in that particular exhibition, but the issue we've ran into that before is that if the artwork hasn't been completed and they give us drawings, is but one, it's hard to jury that. Yeah. And then they may run into issues of costs of, of something else. Um that then we're selecting them and not selecting someone else, and then it doesn't go through. And um but an artist artist who is an installation artist who basically says, you know, I will format this installation for that particular space, then I think that's a way of being able to judge whether or not their, their process of working and the materials they use would be appropriate to this. And we can open it up to that, and then that's the selection panel conversation. Yeah. Okay. Right. So for the RFP, would you ask artists to think of a location and then propose a location, or, or maybe that could be a field in the RFP if they I can are think. familiar with the site, or if they would like the selection panel to pair their artwork with the site. You well, you can add site details um, to the call, so I could add it as an attachment of potential locations. Um, the issues I run into that for as an artist them selecting the site and there may be a stakeholder in site. Maybe it's behind mm -hmm. the mall and, and um, Danielle there wants to assist in choosing the one there also. Or so there could be something where we may run into a barrier of, you know, the art's only going to do it if at this site. Um, but we could do a list of potential locations with images for them um, and, um, and add that as an attachment onto it for sure. Yeah, um, because the ones that would be available next year uh, we would already know um, some that would be available in the next four years or something. We're looking at moving some of those planners, et cetera, but that won't be most likely in time for this first art. And I guess would 
with the understanding be that it's ultimately selection panel's decision if that gets matched or not? It, correct. Okay, yeah. It would be up to the selection panel, then bringing it forth to you here. Um, again, unless there was some other stakeholder involved that I'm not thinking of right now that would assist in, um, if it's not all city property that we're looking at. Thank you. That just helps me think about how this would be brought back to our committee. And, and the concrete pads that you've priced mm -hmm. out, these are, they're, they're mobile and they get moved over with a grade all or something? How do they... Yeah, so um, um, what I got received a quote on was um, eight five by five pads. Five by five. Okay. Um, and those you can just move them with the forklift. Mm -hmm. um, so that would again be part of our project budget is getting the city staff to move it. The nice thing about this is, and, and again, these may not all need five by five pads. Maybe one is a three by two or something, right? So we could get some port, but we start getting stock of things that we can keep at the courtyard. So as we keep to have these shows, one, we're not drilling into our own concrete and having to repair it. Um, and we could strategically place these around town. And again, not all may need a concrete pad, uh, but this will really help us uh, for our art shows. Uh, are you designing an invite that goes out? Or you know, The reason I ask is that I, my sense is that the there's a slide that's generally associated with an RFP, mm -hmm. and um, the way that looks tends to have a, kind of defines the type of applicant that mm -hmm. you tend to get. Okay. It's yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I hadn't thought about what image to use besides the public art logo. I don't want to restrict anyone by using a certain image of applying. Um, so when I do design it, or um, maybe that's something at the next meeting we talk about, because um, I do need to put all of our notes together and have the project approved by you in order to even move forward with the, with the budget. Um, so maybe we can discuss that at the next one, where um, if I'm going to use an image for this, what would that be? Um, I wasn't planning on it, because um, again, I don't want to restrict people just to see a sculpture and just do sculpture. Right. be wrong. Might be useful to have an image of like the like the street view, the streetscape mm -hmm. view, or something mm -hmm. like that. To, you know, imagine your art here. Mm -hmm. And then, if a, an artist isn't familiar with the setting, then it can be informational in that way as well. Yeah, because some of them we're looking at are two spots in Courthouse Square. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Okay, st still need a title, a name. <laughs> and do we, um, to go back to the discussion on the theme, did we want a theme or do we want to do, is that me, Jack? Do we want to do a um, theme or do we, we'd like to do no theme? What did you just have there prior? You had something. Uh, urban renewal. Yeah. yeah. I think that one's an interesting, it sounds sort of innocuous, but I think, you know, you could talk about that terms in terms of uh, redlining, the displacement of targeted populations in urban space. You know, I mean. Well, I mean, yeah, the, 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 but the, the, the title, the title does sound innocuous, right. which is, um, I, I, I like what it, what it might inspire, what it, 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 how we could talk about it. I, I like the word innovation. Like I actually like um, in the, the last few words in red in that opening paragraph, vision of renewal and innovation. I like renewal and innovation. Um, I like that too, because it leaves a lot of space for interpretation. And it looks to the past and also to the future. <laughs> well, another question is, do we, if we don't have a specific theme, will it be more difficult to actually create a co cohesive Exhibit. 
And that like, would be something up to the selection panel unless you're reviewing all the applicants of what goes where and how do they go together. I mean, I, I could imagine doing something like um, sustainability as a theme and in encouraging artists to submit work that utilizes recycled materials and, and really looks at uh, reuse, recycling, renewal as a theme. And then maybe the, the next exhibition two years later or whatever it is might be on technology and incorporate mm -hmm. technology into your work. And we have to make sure there's infrastructure for electricity or it's solar powered or whatever. Um, that on a curatorial level, that might make it easier to be more cohesive. So even if it's not a title theme per se, it might be sort of um, framing the context for what kind of work we're inviting artists to submit. Perhaps that might be too limiting, though. Well, uh, right before I came here, I just finished putting together a show for Napa that was on sustainability. There are actually. Um, and we did, we received a lot. There's this, um, what's our title? It was um, Climate Action and Sustainability. It's one of our council goals. And so we decided to do another walk on that. Um, and I haven't gotten to see the show yet, but um, if we did get received and uh, uh, some really neat submissions, not a you know, recycled materials, talking about climate change, um, some very literal ones of a world, but, you know, there were just some really interesting ones. Um, so, yeah, I agree. I don't know if we should do that because it's a neighboring city, sort of, that has a yeah. similar show, but, um, yeah. I think, I mean, this is a little redundant. Sort of set up already, but I, I, I do have a feeling that having a dedicated person establishes a curatorial framework and sort of interfaces with the artists in a pretty direct way prior to coming to the selection committee, the jurors, or whoever could have a significant impact on cohesiveness and quality of the presentation. I don't know how viable that is financially. Well, if a curator was still to open up the show, we would have to open the call to all U.S. artists, right. and we'd still be going through the same process. Right. Um, it's outlined in our policy of what our process looks like. Um, I think if we're not going to do an open call, then the guest curator would actually take that on themselves, I believe, I, and I could be wrong, they would take that on themselves and do all of that and then bring it forward. Here are the selected artists without... Um, this as much as the city's involvement of the selection panel and facilitating oh. this. But that could be a possibility in the future. Um, yeah, that, I, I just, like that. It's yeah. possible. I think this is really exciting. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a great idea. Do, do we need a name today? Um, what I will do is I need to put together, um, if, if you'd still like to think a little more about it, um, I'm going to put yeah. together the project mm -hmm. proposal. Um, we may need to do a special meeting for that. I'd like to get this with pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we can discuss the name, et cetera, at the next time if there's any other updates or changes, or I'm mm -hmm. going to continue thinking about it uh, of this Arbok name. Um, and then the next meeting, the next meeting will approve uh, moving forward with the call. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. I think it'd be great if we got an email in it in advance of a special meeting, and we could send in ideas for names, and then create uh, it's like here's some ideas that have been submitted, so we aren't just trying to brainstorm once again like we are today. Can we do uh, that? We can receive emails from the committee. The committee cannot uh, coordinate together, together. Right. Then, but, mm -hmm. but can send but, ideas okay. in to us for us to curate. And, yeah. So if all of you wanted to do that, as mm -hmm. me, well, we'll, I'll have to figure out when the next special meeting is. But okay. yeah, yeah, that gets a reminder. Okay. Thank you. Great. And that just goes to you, Dina.
Great, thank you. All right, so moving on to item 7.5. So we will now. I can just stop you real quick, even though we don't have anybody here. Oh, I need to just open public yeah. comments. And seeing no one from the public here, I'm going to close public comment. <laughs> Now we will move on to item 7.5, call for art platform. Meredith Nudson will provide an update on new call for art platform and our recommended action is information only. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so we have been using Submittable uh, for many years uh, for our uh, grant process as well as art um, and it's been expensive. It's for about 25,000 a year. And um, so we're looking at um, moving away from that. Well, we will be moving away from that, but it's very expensive. And we'll be moving to CAFE, um, the call for entry platform, uh, which many cities use. It's really great for juring art. Um, and it's a, it's a low cost. It's a $250, $225 for a, the first initial fee, $475 per call, as we'll be um, getting the plus plan. Um, and then it's $120 every year renewal. Um, and so, yeah, um, we're right now just reviewing our contract with that. Um, so at the next, um, when we review the budget, because this wasn't a line item on the expenditure plan, um, you'll see that that um, will be sort of a new fee. Um, but we did do a lot of research on some other um, platforms as well. And, and uh, CAFE is widely used throughout not only government, but many organizations. So we're really excited to move towards that and have a big savings as well. What is that switching to again? What was the prior one? Um, submittable. Oh, submittable. That's yeah. what you said. It's submittable. Okay. I admit I found to be very clunky it, using it. As... it, it yes, yeah, submittable. <laughs> it is clunky. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm working with a group of artists on a project for San Rafael, and um, the uh, platform is CAFE, and it seems fine. Mm -hmm. There'll be no entry fee for artists or anything either, like normal, so yeah. Um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Okay, thanks for giving us that update. That's exciting. I'll move to public comment on this item. Meaning that there is no one from the public here, I will close public comment. Uh, no motion is, or vote is needed. Um, we can move on, or if any other committee member has any point to say about this. Okay, we will move on to our last item today. Item 7.6, volunteer request. Meredith will provide an overview of volunteer needs for October. And this is an information only topic. Yeah. Um, so on October 19th, which is Saturday, we are uh, cleaning up the Como mural um, at Prince Memorial Greenway, uh, working with Joe Salinas, and he has some other volunteers coming. Um, and I will be, we purchased the, we had 3000 budgeted for maintenance this year, an expenditure plan. Um, today we purchased the paints, which was about a hundred bucks. And I'm getting all the supplies. Um, and we're going to meet them out there on the 19th. Um, so if one or two of you would like to come um, and help, it's, it's not necessary, but I wanted to open up this opportunity um, to, to help um, possibly put a yellow vest on in case of bikers come or something from one way or another. Um, I expect to be there around 8 a.m. and uh, probably until 2 or 3. So just email not me. Not this weekend, but the following the weekend. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so just email me if you're interested. Okay. Um, I would love to, right. except I'm going to be out of town. So. Yeah. And then um, I'm also purchasing anti-graffiti coating. So back to Monday, um, I will be out there um, putting that on. Um, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then just contact you if we're available for that day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Would you be able to let us know about other pieces that are needing Clean up, and if that is eligible for a community project, um, I am interested in this type of work, but mm -hmm. I am not available on the state. So I would like to, yeah, think about future opportunities. Great, the Greenway really needs some help, and I really want to go be going down there and cleaning it up and getting it ready, like with the anti graffiti coating, so that we're always not going downhill and um, we're just elevating it. Um, but yeah, and if you ever come across anything that has graffiti or anything, please let me know. 
Does that make sense as one or two hour kind of volunteer projects for us just to show up? Stuff if like you were that? to show up on the 19th for one or two hours? Well, or, or these other Greenway projects. Is that that's something if, that's going to be happening regularly? Um, no, I mean, I, you know, oh. every couple months possibly. Um, okay. um, the Greenway, ideally next year, we really start to look at that um, and clean that up more. But they, the Friends of Prince Moore Greenway is going to do a great job of that too. And I wonder if there's opportunity for us to connect with, like, I know the other week we had Creek Week, and there was a lot of volunteer opportunities through Parks and Recreation. Um, wondering if there's opportunity for us to connect with other city departments to enhance programs that are already happening, whether or not Earth Day is an opportunity for that, or um, I just know that there are a lot of other programs that happen in public art. We have a very large collection how we could interface with those. Yeah, something good to think about. Well, all right, everyone. Thank you for our agendized items today. Uh, we'll be moving on to eight chapter reports. Are there first eight part Oh, open public <laughs> comment, right? Sorry, I forgot. Going to open public comment. <laughs> going to close it. And now we're going to close it. <laughs> and now we Thanks. move on to department reports. Uh, are there any reports from staff? Just that um, I'm looking at getting a special meeting on the calendar. Um, so we'll be in touch soon for not only the um, temporary art walk approval, uh, but Earth Day um, is part of just for um, doing some art. So um, in order to go over that, we need to probably do a special meeting. Great. Uh, and now we've got committee member reports. Committee members are welcome to make general comments or announcements at this time. Do we have any events coming up that anyone would like to notify? Okay. I don't either at this time. Um, and at this time, we will adjourn. So our next regular meeting of the APPC is scheduled for Monday, November 4th. Thank you guys for your time today. Thank you. Thanks.